<clears throat> very talented, very top, very talented. What's up, Rich Squad? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe. The road to 7K is in full effect. This is episode number two of my weekly Q&A called Q&A Fridays. I'll be putting all these Q&As in a playlist, so make sure you go check out the previous episode. Some of the questions in episode two was rolled over from questions not answered in episode one. So guys, please leave your questions down below for episode three. I will really appreciate it. You could ask any type of questions you want, personal questions, footballing questions, ask about anything. It just might make the cut. Remember, there will only be 10 questions per episode in order to keep it nice, short, and sweet. For question number one, Sami Kiani asks, how many African teams will make it out their group? Well, I think we're going to see two African teams make it out their group. If I have to pick two teams right now because I haven't done an official 2018 World Cup predictions, like I haven't put out a video saying this is final and this is who I think is going to make it out a group and whatnot, I haven't done that yet. But so far, so far, I have condemned Asian teams but not African teams. So I'm going to say Nigeria and Senegal. Nigeria, they made it out their group. In the 2014 World Cup, which had Argentina, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Iran. So for the 2018 World Cup, I'm going to back Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria to make it out their group, which has Argentina again for the fifth time, Croatia, and the debutants, Iceland. Do you guys think that Nigeria will make it out the group of death, in my opinion? Let me know in the comment section down below. The second African team I think is going to make it out their group is Senegal. They were joining Group H alongside Poland, Colombia, and Japan. One of Colombia and Poland will flop in my opinion. And Japan, I'm definitely writing them off. I don't think they're going to do good at the World Cup at all. With the likes of Sadio Mane, Idrissa Ghana, Gay, Keita, Balde, Diaw, Khalidou Koulibaly, and a whole bunch of talented players, I think that Senegal will go on another golden run just like they did at the 2002 World Cup when they made it to the quarterfinals on their debut. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much, Sami Kiani, for the question. But I would like to add that Egypt, Morocco, and Tunisia can also spring surprises. So do not write them off even though I'm kind of, you know, leaning towards them not making it to the round of 16. But do not write them off. They are still in with a shout. For question number two, Nitish Kanchan asks, Do they love football there in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Well, the answer to that is yes, they absolutely love football. It is the most popular sport, in my opinion, even though, you know, we play cricket in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and a few other sports like athletics and, you know, rugby and tennis and swimming, a few other sports. Football is definitely the most popular sport. Whenever Real Madrid and Barcelona are playing in El Clasico, you can see the evidence on my social media feeds. You know, the guys and the girls, they're going crazy. Barca, Real, Hala Madrid, da 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 da. You know, so football is very much the most popular sport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we even made it to the best 12 CONCACAF teams for the 2018 World Cup qualifiers. Like, that was pretty, pretty good. You know, we played versus the USA as well. So, you know, St. Vincent versus the USA, big, big, big matchup. So, thank you very much for your question, Nitish Kanchan. For question number three, Automatic Ask. What teams do you know from Brazil? And if you know any, which is your favorite? Tanks. You know, um, really great question, Automatic. I know quite a few teams from Brazil. I don't know them inside out, but I know of the names and I'm pretty familiar with... The hell was that? I'm pretty familiar with some of the players who have, you know, transferred out of some of these teams. Well, I know of Flamengo. Palmeiras, where Gabriel Jesus came from, Corinthians, Vasco da Gama, 
Grêmio, I have a Grêmio shirt. Atletico Mineiro, I know that Ronaldinho played for that club. Fluminense, Sport Recife, Sao Paulo, Botafogo, Internacional, Santos, and Chapo Coense, that team who lost their players in that tragic, tragic, tragic plane crash. Um, I don't have a favorite team from Brazil, but I was kind of going for Grêmio because I bought one of their home kits. But people kept saying that Grêmio is a racist club and this, that, because of some incident that happened in 2014. So I kind of just chill out on the Grêmio thing. But I have to definitely start following Brazilian football more closely. We have seen a lot, a lot of talented players coming through the ranks of some of these teams. So we might as well pay close 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 attention to the source which is the Brazilian league thank you very much for your question automatic for question number four three people ask a similar similar question the first part of question number four ELJ gaming YT ask can Argentina win the World Cup just for Lionel Messi well my answer to that question can Lionel win the World Cup just for Argentina because he has been carrying Argentina on his back throughout the whole qualification process. So can Argentina please rally and do him a favor and win the World Cup for him? Because Lionel Messi has never won a major tournament with Argentina. He came very, very close in the 2014 World Cup, but just fell short because of who? Mario Götze and Germany. The second person to ask this similar question was Faisal Kamal. Will Argentina win the 2018 World Cup? And Stefan Muradali from Trinidad and Tobago also asked, if Messi wins the World Cup, is he the greatest of all time for you? Well, let me answer Faisal Kamal's question. Um, will Argentina win the World Cup? It's quite possible. They are one of the favorites, definitely top four, you know, runners up 2014, two time world champions. They made it to the finals, I think four times and they played Germany three out of four times. So if they get to the finals again, they would definitely want to avoid Germany. Definitely want to avoid Germany. So will Argentina win the World Cup? quite possible but i'm not gonna call it just yet i'm not gonna call it just yet but um if argentina wins the world cup Lionel messi will definitely be the greatest modern player of all time and he will definitely stack up stack up really well versus all the former greats like you know pele and maridana france beckenbauer just the name of you so Lionel Messi you need to win the World Cup with Argentina time is running out you probably have one World Cup left in you because you're just 31 so definitely definitely well he's almost 31 so definitely he needs to definitely win the 2018 World Cup with Argentina but I don't know, man. I don't know. They need to sort their things out. Jorge Sampoli need to get his combination correct and pick the right players to take to the World Cup. So I hope that answers those three questions. Thank you guys for definitely asking it. And ask more questions for episode three, all right? So guys, do you think that Lionel Messi and Argentina will lift the 2018 World Cup? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. On to question number five, where Goran asks, how do you plan to adjust World Cup games with your working schedule? I work the second shift so I could watch all the games and sleep about five hours. It will be tough, but I do not want to miss any action. Very, very great question, Goran. Great, great question. Well, the answer to that is um, I absolutely hate, I hate the World Cup schedule. Like I did not think about this until you actually asked me this question because I was planning to watch every single World Cup game but it might still be possible but I will be interrupted a lot because I'll be at work and where I'm assigned at work, I will definitely face interruptions. I will, however, catch a glimpse of every single game because the games are at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 
11 a.m. Eastern Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Time. I really love the 2 p.m. matches because after I get out of work at 2.30, I could actually catch most of that match. But for the morning games, oh man, they got to mess me up because I'll be at work and, you know, I'll have to be watching the games while at work. So guys, look out for my reaction, my immediate reactions while I'm at work. I'll have to be stealing time from the company just to make a quick five minute reaction and stuff like that. For um, people in the Central and Pacific times, it's even earlier. So people that's working in the morning, they, they're going to be heavily affected by this schedule and the fact that Russia is hosting the World Cup. I would have actually definitely loved if it was in the night. I, I would have preferred to watch the games in the night, lose sleep, and go to work the next day. I would have definitely preferred that. But I'll be watching the game still and I'll be recording them on DVR and I'll be catching the action when I get home. So the plan right now is to do quick fire reactions just after every game and then later on in the evening, you know, I do like a summary of the day where I talk, talk about the matches or I will probably go live and talk about the matches with you guys. What do you think about that idea, guys? Let me know in the comment section down below and keep the questions coming, Goran. Thank you. So for question number six, Brian Hinojosa and Ziga Karun ask, what do you think about the changes to next season's Champions League? I've been kind of dodging this question because I didn't really know of all the changes that are made to the Champions League from I think the 2018-19 to like 2021-22 or something like that. So I kind of avoided that question for the first Q&A but I did some research and I found out that 26 teams will gain direct entry to the group stages of the 2018-19 UEFA Champions League instead of 22 before they had 10 places up for grabs in qualifiers but now there will only be six places up for grabs so that means that the top four associations in Europe will get four teams each that's England Italy Germany and Spain that's pretty pretty awesome for these associations because before they had to play qualifiers for like the team that came fourth I think definitely for England so they have cut that out and I think it will make the competition a little bit more competitive because if you have 10 teams from like lesser leagues or lesser associations participating we see a lot of score lines like 7-1 and 8 this and 6 this and you know so I think it will definitely tighten up the competition you know from Italy Spain, Germany, and England. You have top teams coming out of those leagues. And from France, I think we have two teams from France. I think you have one from Portugal, two from Russia. You have one from Turkey, and something like that. But it definitely makes room for a more competitive Champions League. I think the lesser associations will suffer, but there's always the Europa League. Don't ever forget that. And to talk about the Europa League, the champions of the Europa League now get a direct spot. Like last season, Manchester United benefited from that. And the champions of the Champions League gets a direct spot. So it does open up room for, for example, an association like, say, the Czech Republic to get a direct entry to the group stage if, for example, Real Madrid or Liverpool wins one out of the two because Liverpool is currently battling you know top four football in um the Premier League so it's definitely interesting you know the lower associations will still benefit and I think they are they are pumping like more money into the lower associations as well another change they have made was um staggered kickoff times which I really really love so instead of the matches playing like simultaneously, um, they have staggered kickoff time so you could catch the matches. I really like that. I really, really like that um, idea. But there are some few other changes, but it's nothing really major, major. It's more about the teams qualifying directly to the group stages and, you know, those teams that go into qualifiers then go into Europa League directly or something like that. So... 
the changes don't really bother me they don't really bother me so I'm gonna take whatever I get to be honest how do you like the changes guys let me know in the comment section down below I hope I answered that question properly I did to the best of my ability for question number seven This bottle of water is actually from episode one and I'm drinking it. Seven days old water, but it's still, it's still good. But question number seven, Ali Jalal asks, who will be the 2018 World Cup surprise team? Well, in my opinion, okay, let me, let me go back to 2014. We had Costa Rica and Colombia reaching the quarterfinals. They did really, really good. I think they both topped their groups, if I'm not mistaken. But they were really, really good. James Rodriguez won Golden Boot Award. Kelona Vas was awesome. We had Joel Campbell, very awesome. We had Brian Ruiz, really good. And they got knocked out by the Netherlands in penalty shootout. So they were really, really, really good. And, you know... I don't think that Costa Rica is going to pull it off again. And Colombia is no longer a surprise team, you know, with the quality that they have in their squad. So I'm going to pick two teams that I think can be big, big surprises at the 2018 World Cup. And those teams are Denmark and Serbia. Denmark in Group C with France, Australia and Peru. I think they can, I think they can definitely get out of this group along with... Mm, one of France, Australia, and Peru. I'm not calling that group just just as yet, but I really like the look of Denmark. Pionis Sisto, Christian Eriksen, we have Yusuf Paulsen, and a few other talented, talented players in that team. And for Serbia, man, we have Nemanja Matic, we have Alexander Mitrovic, we have Alexander Kolarov, we have Adam Jajic. That team is stacked up. It has talent, and I think they can get out of a very difficult group, which has Brazil, Switzerland, and Costa Rica. Who will be your surprise teams of the 2018 World Cup, guys? Let me know in the comment section down below. Great question, Ali Jalal. For question number eight, Fish Rhino asks, cool name, by the way, Fish Rhino. Will any Asian teams make it out the group stage? No, 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 in my opinion. No, Australia doesn't make it out. Saudi Arabia doesn't make it out. Japan doesn't make it out. South Korea does not make it out. And Iran does not make it out. I did a video on that. I eliminated all Asian teams. I know people from Asia will be pissed off at me. It's quite, quite fine. It's just my opinion. Do you guys think that any Asian teams will make it to the round of 16? Mm, you can let me know in the comment section down below. But at the 2014 World Cup, no Asian teams made it out their group. And dating all the way back to 1982, no Asian teams, with the exception of Australia, who isn't even Asian, has made it out of their groups in a World Cup hosted by a European nation. 1982 Spain, 1990 Italy, 1998 France, 2006 Germany, Australia made it to the round of 16, and now 2018 Russia. I don't think any Asian teams will make it out their group, but anything could happen. Anything could happen. This is just my opinion and what's in my head, but let me know what's in yours in the comment section down below. For question number nine, E. Bradley asks, imagine a world where every player played for their nation of birth. Would the regular World Cup winners be different? Well, this is a good question, but when you really think about it, I have to reconstruct and I have to kind of re-engineer the question to make it a better question and I would do it like this. What if countries can only field players born in that country or whose parents were born in that country? You, you understand what I'm trying to say? E. Bradley, to answer your initial question, it wouldn't affect the World Cup winner because Brazilians are mostly born in Brazil. 
you know so it wouldn't really affect Brazil because they have won the World Cup five times Germany they have won the World Cup four times Italy as well and the majority of players who featured in those World Cup wins were originally from Germany but the countries that I think will be affected negatively by the reconstructed question where countries can only field players born in the country or whose parents were born in the country are England, Germany, Portugal and especially France. Maybe Switzerland to a lesser extent but these countries have a lot of immigrants, they have a lot of people from for example France, from Africa, England as well, from Africa, Jamaica and it will definitely affect them if you take these players out the squads and field only English based players or players whose parents were born in England, players who were born in England it will definitely affect these teams. For teams like Spain it wouldn't really affect them that much like Diego Costa wouldn't be able to play for Spain and maybe for teams like Italy who is not in the World Cup guys like Thiago Mata wouldn't be able to play there and back in the day Zidane wouldn't be able to play for France so it's a good question but it's kind of you know you understand what I'm saying I had to reconstruct it for the final question which is the featured question of episode 2 Andrew the best ask who do you think will not do as good as you expect in the World Cup or the World Cup flops the World Cup flip flops who will be the biggest flops at the 2018 World Cup great question Andrew the best well we have 32 teams and I think that 14 teams have extremely high expectations well this is just my opinion I did a little analysis of this and I think 18 of the teams that are at the World Cup they are just happy to be there they are just happy to be playing in it they qualified some of these teams like Egypt haven't qualified since 1990 Morocco haven't qualified since 98 we have Peru haven't qualified since all the way in in, in where 1982 and these teams are just happy to be back at the big tournament we have Iceland and Panama making it for the first time so they're just happy to be there but teams like Russia Uruguay Portugal Spain France Argentina Croatia Brazil Germany Mexico Belgium England Poland and Colombia they have big big expectations and if they don't make it out of groups it will be considered a big big flop in my opinion I think teams like Poland Senegal Switzerland Denmark they're just happy to be there they're happy to be there and teams like Saudi Arabia they're happy to be there Australia they're happy to be there but these teams that I mentioned these 14 teams they have high high expectations well my big flops teams that I think can definitely flip flop flip flop big big time Mexico they are in a very tough group which has the holders Germany Sweden who prevented Italy from making it to the World Cup and South Korea who placed fourth at the 2002 World Cup so Mexico they have a big big task on their hands it's going to be tough it's not going to be easy Juan Carlos Osario needs to get all his strategies right needs to pick the right 11 needs to take the right players to the World Cup or else Mexico will flop remember I put Mexico as my biggest ever World Cup underachiever like they never passed the quarterfinals they have been to the World Cup like 15 times and their record has been just appalling so Mexico get your act together or else you will flop at the 2018 World Cup the other team that I think could flop England definitely England at the 2014 World Cup, England flopped in a group which was topped by Costa Rica. So England, you need to get your act together or else you will definitely fail. Gareth Southgate, you need to pick the right team, you need to take the right players and come on. For a team which has one of the best leagues in the world, the English Premier League, England need to clean up their act and perform well at the 2018 World Cup or else 
they will definitely flop again like they did at the 2014 event. Another team that I think could flop at the 2018 World Cup is Croatia. Ever since they made it to the semi-final of place third, they have flopped at every World Cup they have qualified to since. So for 2018, it's gonna be no difference in my opinion. They have always had a very, 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 very talented, very top very talented squad on paper this fly <laughs> and at this 2018 world cup it will be no different they have the big guns like luka Madric, mario manzukic ivan perisic ivan rakitic in their team and with a midfield and forwards like that i know i'm missing some big names as well they gotta do good they definitely gotta do good and if they don't it will be a flop remember they have Nigeria, Argentina, and Iceland to contest with. Iceland, a team who beat them during qualification. So, Croatia, get your act together or else you will flip-flop again. Another team I think could flop big time is Poland. Definitely Poland. What I've seen from Robin Lewandowski recently in the last few matches, it's kind of solidifying my decision to put Poland on the flip-flop list because he haven't been so good at all and he's playing for Bayern Munich you know so when you're coming up against bigger and better oppositions Robert Lewandowski can definitely be shown up so the other guys from the Polish team need to come together and they need to definitely support their big striker and captain up front um, 2014 World Cup flops included England, Portugal, Spain, Croatia, Italy and Russia. Who will make the cut at the 2018 World Cup? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And thank you, Andrew, the best for asking this lovely question and having it featured in this week's episode. Guys, that's all I have for episode two of Q&A Fridays. If your question didn't get featured, ask me more questions. Guys, remember to keep it interesting, keep it fun, keep it entertaining, keep it clean let's have some fun on the channel i want to keep q and fridays around because i get to personalize this video however i want it and it's all me you get to see me no hat nothing raw in the flesh guys do you like my nigeria 2018 world cup jersey let me know in the comment section down below keep the questions coming if you're new to the channel Make sure you subscribe, smash the thumbs up button, share the video, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time, peace out, Rich Squad!